through some quirk and beingness, we decided to play a game, really a game of limitation. We decided to be just a little limited. Now, in order to be that way, we had to move away from the all. The all is unlimited. And so we drew a wide circle around us. We were nearly unlimited at that moment. And then we wanted to play with the feeling of becoming unlimited again. But when we started that direction, we fell into a trap. In the game of limitation, we, instead of going back to the unlimited, we went further and drew a less wide circle around ourselves and became more limited and tried to get out of that. We kept doing that and the main divisions of it is first we were what is called a causal body. We created a body to be separate in. And in the causal body, it's the realm of ideation to us now, the realm of ideas. And in that causal body, the moment we had an idea, it was completely fulfilled. It's almost like hurting yourself and stopping and say, gee, that feels good. You create a little separation and it feels good to go toward the all each time. So we first created the causal body. And the moment we had an idea, a thought, a wish, it was immediately fulfilled. Then we tried playing more limited through, a, through an astral body, which to those of us who are now in the physical is a heavenly life. In the astral body, whatever you think is immediately affected. We're not limited by time there. Then we moved from the astral into the physical, which is the slowest, the most dense realm possible to any being in the universe. This is the lowest state possible, the physical. There's only one possibility of going lower, and that's lower in the physical. But the physical state is the lowest state. This is the deadest state that's possible unto us. When you know this, you'll never fear death, because death feels like a wonderful freeing. It's a tremendous experience after you do it, not before. <laughs> because before we think we are nothing but this body when this body goes we go and even the pain in death is not nearly as much as the pain you suffer through life you have migraine headache and diseases and mental agonies with families and heartbreaks and love that's more severe than dying at death because dying at death generally is just a pain for a moment and then this tremendous feeling of freedom. So we came down to this most limited and densest state called the physical. And now all of us are on the way back. And there's no question about that. We're in a period of the world that is relatively low in vibration, very difficult, very physical. And those of us who are on the path are definitely on the way out, because if we can get the right direction in this morass of livingness as it is today, it's because we started on this a long time ago and we're continuing it in spite of the world, so to speak. And we can go from the physical, we can graduate, get our wings, and fly off into the astral. And you can spend far more millenniums in the astral than you do here, because it's an easier way of life. And then we can graduate into the causal. 
But if you understand what the ego is, you can go all the way from the lowest realm that we are in now back to the highest by eliminating the ego sense. When we lose all of our ego sense, we are fully realized. We go all the way. We return to being the all. The opportunity, the opportunity to do this exists more in this realm than any other realm. Because it is so difficult that the incentive is greatest in this realm. As life gets easier, the incentive to grow gets less. But when you think you are not going to eat and the whole, whole world is going to collapse on you and so forth and you have a sick body and all these troubles, you have a tremendous incentive to get out of that. And the incentive being so much stronger in this realm, it's possible to transcend all the realms and go right back to the one or the all. So this sense of egoity is very basic and very important. It's the start of all trouble, and letting go of it is the elimination of all trouble. It's the sense of not being the all, not being that God which we are. And if you're not the all, there's something missing and you're trying to get it. First a hundred dollars, then a thousand, then a million, then a billion, then the earth, then the moon, then the solar system, then the galaxy, until you wake up to the fact that everything you're trying to get, you are. And once you see that, there's nothing to be gotten anymore. You are it. It's really a joke when you see the overall picture of how people struggle to get tiny bits of what they are. So every time you see something wrong in the world, look upon it as a mirror, and that's all it is. It's reflecting to you your consciousness. If you accept this, you can use it to undo your ego. There's nothing out there but our consciousness. If you ever want to know what your consciousness is, just take a check on what is around you and what you see and what you go through every day in life. That's your consciousness. This is the danger in reading newspapers, listening to the radio. <clears throat> the world in general has a very negative consciousness. If you go with it, it helps you in that direction. Now, if someone tells you that that's escape, it's not. Anytime you acknowledge anything in the world, you're supporting it. If you acknowledge war and death and misery, you're supporting it. That's the mental thoughts you're sending out. You see, we all send out thoughts. Every time we have a thought, we think it's a secret little thing within ourselves. It goes out to the universe. So the masters support the world. They counterbalance all the apparent negativity by just sitting in a cave and sending out the good whole thoughts, constructive thoughts, thoughts of oneness. So the only way we can give 
real help to the entire world is by helping ourselves. The more positive our consciousness is, the more we send that out to everyone. <laughs>